Right. Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, a little follow up to the video I did yesterday. An ounce of salt per day, 6492 says, are you now acknowledging that we may now actually be in this time period, the little season, when Satan is loosed once more after the thousand year reign? All right, so I want to walk you through this. All right, there is no 1,000 year reign. I cannot express that. I cannot say that enough. There just is no 1,000 year reign anywhere in the Bible. It's not found in Revelation 20. It's not found anywhere at all. In fact, the scripture, the Bible is very clear, very clear that Jesus reigns forever, forever. All right, so there is no 1,000 year reign. I can't show you, look, here it isn't because it's not there. It's not here. It's not anywhere. Revelation 20 verse 4 in verse 6. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years. Period. It says they, meaning we that are saved, we live and reign with Christ. We live and reign with Christ right now. If you do not live and reign with Christ right now, then you're not saved by your own words. Again in verse 6, they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. If you're not a priest of God and of Christ, and if you don't reign with him right now, by your own words, you're not saved. Now think about that. And again, don't lose sight of the fact that there is no suggestion anywhere in Revelation 20 or anywhere in the Bible that Jesus reigns 1,000 years. It's nowhere. Nowhere to be found. So, this comment, this question or whatever, when Satan is loosed once more after the thousand year reign, there is no thousand year reign. The little season in Revelation 20, we read this here in verse 3, at, after the thousand years, again, it's not talking about Jesus reigning a thousand years, it's simply talking about a thousand year period. Okay. We read about this little season in verse 3 and also in verse 7 when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed and what happens when he's loosed he goes out to deceive the nations to gather them together all right now when this happens we are up in the air with the Lord and make no mistake about that why is that so important well because you see that Satan gathers together his people the unsaved and they compass themselves around the camp of the Saints the beloved 
city. Now, where is the beloved city? Uh, this is crucial stuff. Crucial. Crucial to understand. You know, this stuff matters, right? Jerusalem is the holy city. And it is above. Alright, in John 15, I think it is, or 14 or something. <clears throat> Excuse me, 14. In John 14, Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. This is the city of God above, the holy city, the beloved city. It's above. All right, so when Jesus comes back, we are lifted up in the air. We are in the air, and the enemy is gathered at our feet. Okay, this is all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. All right, consider the parable of the wheat and the tares. All right. So at the time of the harvest, which is the end of the world, then are the wheat gathered in the Lord's barn, which is above, and the tares, which is the unsaved, are gathered down below, okay? exactly what we read in Revelation 20. Go to Genesis 3. When the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. We are above, the enemy is below, God stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. So also, in Revelation 20, we are gathered up in the air, and fire comes down from God. God stomps his heel on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever okay it's that simple